Last year, our first game featured the Clarkston Wolves and the Troy Colts. Clarkston was shut out in the first half and tried a second-half comeback, but they were no match for Troy's defense, and they met again in the playoffs with the Colts on top again. Under coach Gary Griffith, the Troy Colts have always been a well-disciplined team. Leading the pack is Kyle Rance, who returns this year as starting quarterback. Rance and his Colt teammates brought the state championship home to Troy. Can they equal their success this year? We'll find out tonight as the Troy Colts take on the revengeful Clarkston Wolves. TCI Sports High School Football Game of the Week. Tonight from Troy High School, it's the Troy Colts hosting the Clarkston Wolves. Hello, everyone. Dave Zorin along with Joe Abramson here to kick off the 1995 football season. And, Joe, a rematch of last year's starting and initial uh, game of the season last year and uh, a great matchup again. Oh, yeah. Great game last year. Well, Troy kind of showed early on this is the team to beat. They won 14-6, to and Clarkston's touchdown came late in the game. They played again later in the year in the playoffs, and Troy won 14-0. Clarkston only lost two games all year, both to Troy. Troy went on, won the state championship. And with 13 starters returning, they're picked number one in the state by both the Detroit News and the Detroit Free Press. Now, the Troy Colts come back strong this year as opposed to the Wolves. The Wolves lost a lot of players, Joe. Lost a ton of players. Three starters returning on defense, zero on offense. But from everything you read in the papers, Coach Richardson doesn't sound too concerned about it. He's ready to come out. I don't think either team likes opening with a league game, and I'm sure Clarkston does not like opening a league game with the number one team in the state. And, of course, this game features two strong quarterbacks and great athletes, Joe. Well, yeah, Dane Fife, a sophomore for Clarkston. This is his first varsity start. His older brother, Dugan, holds all the passing records here. He had been a four-year starter. Dane's on his way to being a three-year starter. Fortunately for him, in a way, he's a new starter with 10 other guys, so he doesn't have to prove himself as much. It's a learning process for all of them. And on the other side, Kyle Rance, a very strong quarterback who also plays starting defensive end. Yeah, he can do pretty much everything. He's starting defensive end, starting quarterback, ranked the 13th best player in the county regardless of position. And he's such a great athlete. He's a basketball player and a baseball player. There are colleges talking about recruiting him as a tight end. Coach Gary Griffith figures he's the kind of guy you can slide in wherever you need him. If you need a tight end, give him a shot there. If you need a defensive end, you put him there. But he's got a lot of talent, and expect them to throw a little bit more than we've been used to seeing Troy do in the past. Well, there you have it. When we come back, we'll have the kickoff for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the kickoff of the 1995 football season. It's the way you inspire. It's the way you grow. It's the way you lead. It's the way you play. It's the way you work. It's the way you discover. TCI. It's the way you learn. It's the way. What TCI is looking to do is we're looking to be a full-service provider, a, a one-stop shopping place, if you will. Um, we're looking to provide all the services that anyone wants to consume in the area of communications, whether that's cable television, whether that's telephone, whether that's data, online services. Um, our goal is to be able to provide all those through one avenue, and that avenue being TCI. On the Master Anglers, we bring you the hottest fishing action around the state of Michigan. From tips and techniques, to advice and stories from the pros, the Master Anglers gives you the info you need to catch the big ones. Plus, it's just plain fun. That's the Master Anglers, Thursday nights at 8 on TCI Channel 63. Welcome back to Troy High School. Dave Zorin along with Joe Abramson for the kickoff of the 1995 football season. 
as the Troy Colts will set it up to kick off to the Clarkston Wolves. I'm sure after last year, about the last thing Clarkston wants to see is Troy, but then again, if you can win the game, you, you pay him back real quick. Not a great way to start the season. It would be like uh, uh, the Wolverines t taking on Notre Dame to start the season like they did so many years, and uh, it's... Uh, not a, a great way to start the well, scene when you got one of your uh, division foes say, in the very first game. It's hard to make the combination. As you see last year's records, again, those two losses from Clarkston, both to Troy. Troy's one loss was, I believe, to Waterford Kettering 10-7. to yeah, It's tough enough to you know have a league foe and then have it such a tough team. From Clarkston's standpoint, is Troy. That's just a double, uh, a double whammy for you. And we're underway. The Wolves having trouble taking O'Meara's kick. And finally brought down at around the 20-yard line is Fallon, Brad Fallon. Our officials this evening, Leo Flynn, Rick Welzine, Lyle Sanderson, Tony Biscup, and Mark Bauer, the linesman. And, we, and now we get to look directly into the sun for the next half hour <laughs> and, and try to get these numbers right. Facing west, right into the sun, and the field position really in a north-south position and this wind coming from the north. So Clarkston going against the wind. The pitch going back on the first play of scrimmage for the Wolves. Not much there for Chapman. Ryan Chapman, a safety also defensively, starting at tailback this year. The senior six foot 170. You know, and uh, Clarkston, you know, we talk about this tough, uh, tough opener. It doesn't get any, uh, any easier next week. They play against Pontiac Central, who is also one of the top teams in Oakland County. You know, you can kill yourself right out of the playoffs in the first two weeks if you're not careful, but again, you can also get some momentum and have the rest of the world fearing you the rest of the season. Dane Fife, the sophomore starting quarterback, sets up for the Wolves. He goes back to throw a short pass, and twisting and turning and picking up the first down is Wasilk, and Tim Wasilk, the senior wide receiver, doing the job there. Yeah, there's a, a connection you probably have heard for years and years in Clarkston Moore in basketball, Fife and Wasilk. Yeah together and here you see the replay a quick hitch and he turns and gets some yardage after the catch and right now you, know, you take advantage of that midfield area that's something Gary Griffith's a little concerned with he's got that great what one of the papers is termed Catholic League style defense but he's a little worried about his linebackers right now it's the one part that hasn't picked up to the level he wants just yet Clarkston no returning starters on offense so they start from scratch this season and number 22 on the carry Degain, the the Joe Degain on it, and, and he was sacked for a loss of about three, four yards. Three yards, and it'll be second and about 13. Oh, they tried for a quick hitter there in the Troy defense. That defensive line, it's probably the only way to even try to get past him is with that quick hitter, but they're so big and so talented. And the quarterback, Kyle Ranch, you saw him on top, number six, coming around. Also, and we asked uh, Kerry, Kerry Griffith before the game about, you know, you gonna, is he actually going to start on defense? And he looked at us like we were nuts to even ask the question. <laughs> With his size, he said, sure he is. And he is starting a defensive tackle. He got his arm up that time. And the pass incomplete out there intended for Wasil. And the Colts cover that one well. It'll bring up a third and long now for the Wolves. And that is where that size comes into effect. The guy's six foot six, 214 pounds, I believe. And we watched him warm-ups when he'd come in on defense up there. And you'd see from behind the quarterback, it's really hard to look for your receiver with all that mass in front of you. And that has been a trademark of the Troy Colts, that big size on that offensive and defensive line the past few years. And, you know, and they have to replace some guys like John McCall, who I believe has gone on to Central Michigan. But, you know, the talent's still there. Third and about 13. For Dane Fife and the Wolves. Drops back quick, quick opener on a slant in and nothing there. Gain of about oh, four or five yards. Let's see what he picked up. Oh, it's bigger, not going to matter. Gain than that, but it'll be fourth and about five coming up. Well, it's one of those things. This is what most teams go through against Troy. The usual theory here is if you can score once or twice, you got a chance because their offense doesn't score a lot, but you never know. Right now, they're playing very smart, though. Letting Fife take a two or three step drop and get the ball away quick, not have to deal with a pass rush just yet. He's a sophomore in his first varsity start. They don't want to overload him just yet with that kind of pressure. The snap is low, but getting it off is Teague, Mark Teague, and it falls short at about the 40 yard line and dribbles inside the 35. 
ball at about the 30, 33. And first and 10 there for the Colts. Kurt Richardson, the head coach of the Clarkston Wolves. And I'm sure he's going to try to do something about this schedule making in the near future. Because again, this is the kind of game you don't want to belabor the point, but if both these teams could go undefeated, this would be a great sixth or seventh week matchup. Get your hands up. He's going to There's Gary Griffith, the head coach of the champion Troy Colts, state champion Troy Colts, and their first offensive possession of the year coming up here. And again, picked by most experts to repeat, which is something I'm sure they're not thrilled with. You kind of don't want to <laughs> be picked for that. It's a lot better to do what you did last year and come up and surprise people. And there was a penalty. Penalty flag dropped back at the 40-yard line of Clarkston, against and they're going to mark this off against Troy. So the offense will come well, back out defense. for the Wolves, and the defense will go back out Let's there. Let's see what we'll the see. call was. Let's see if we can hear Got the call. Got holding on, the, on Troy during the kick. It's a 10-yard penalty. Clarkston gets a first down. There now, it is. As best as I can interpret that ruling, it's holding, which is technically an offensive penalty on the return, but because Troy never took possession of the ball, there, it was never a post-possession foul. Therefore, it's still Clarkston's possession as the foul occurs. It might be what they're discussing once again. And the ball is just shy, right in midfield, just shy of the line. So midfield for the Wolves on their first possession now, and that works out very well. You know, uh, Gary Griffith brought up an interesting point I think will affect both teams as well. It's been so hot in August that these teams are not in the condition they want to be in because they couldn't practice as long as they usually would. Here's five back to pass on a quick drop back. And he unloads down about the 20-yard line intended for Wassil. Yeah, well, he got... <laughs> He got nailed by Jamal Kassar as he threw the ball. And that's the first time he took more than a three-step drop yeah. and tried to go deep. And that, again, I think is why they're not going to do too much of that. He's going to be on his backside every time he does it against Troy. That's a lot to ask of a sophomore in his first start. And yeah, that was the deepest drop back that he had so far. All the passes have been short. Quick hitters. Quick hitters, too, though. He had to wait for that receiver to make his move. Second and ten now. The pitch goes back to Shatman, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain. It'll bring up a third and ten now for yeah. the Wolves in Dane Fife. Well, that time Joe Conley came in and closed it up real fast. You take a look at this run. Doesn't even see the line of scrimmage. There's Conley coming from behind and making the tackle. And, and watch uh, for that fumble. He looked like yep. he didn't have real, real good control of the ball. Well, I'll tell you, you know, you read again in the free press, I believe they had some coaches quoting defense, saying that, well, Troy's playing Catholic League defense. defense. What they really mean is more specifically Catholic Central defense, and you just don't run on it. Third and period. 10 now, rolling out his fife. He's got receivers flooding the zone. Intended downfield and caught. Tipped and caught downfield by Dave Price. Excuse me, by Conley, Brad Conley. Well, that was Adam Atkins who tipped it. Could have had the interception. Interception, but he is a lineman, <laughs> and they don't do that. Let's take a look at Fife rolling out weak side. And he's going to turn right here, and this is a hard throw to make. He's got to turn Square's body up. Right there, you see Adkins tip it, and uh, well, it's like you designed it in the playbook. Conley came down with the catch. Brad Conley, a junior wide receiver and defensive back at six foot 160, gives the Wolves a first down just inside the 40 yard line, about the 38. Chapman on the carry, plunges forward for maybe two or three yards. And it's about second and seven coming up. Well, and again, like I say, you just, you just don't run on a defense like this. You, you do it occasionally because you have to, but you are not going to succeed unless you can get that passing game going, which so far, Clarkston's doing. Clarkston mixing it up well with balance of pass and run here. Two receivers split to the bottom of your screen. I formation in the backfield for Fife. Now second and seven. Five quick drop back. Now will roll out. Feels pressure. Unloads downfield. A low pass. And he caught it. Wassell caught it. Yeah, well, there was pressure coming from both Conley and Adkins. And Fife did a good job. Get out of the pocket and find the open man. You're going to see Adkins coming right from your right side. Conley's going to come from around as well. A great catch by Wasilk. 
Good catch by Wassell, positioning himself. About third and four. Third and about uh, three or four, four yards, yeah. Third and four coming up now for Clarkston. They have eaten up the clock, 6.27 and counting left here in the first quarter. It's been all war so far. Chapman off tackle, bounces out, could have the first down. Let's see where they mark it. Looks like he's gonna be a little short. Well, I think you go for it here unless you've got a great kicker. Let's see, he's about a yard and a half short. It'll be fourth and about a couple yards coming up. Fourth and two. And I also think you roll out pass. Five, four of six right now for 34 yards passing. Not bad. So a lot of poise. And the kind of foot speed he's shown getting outside, a rollout pass here, I think gives you the most opportunities to convert this yard and a half. Full house in the backfield now for Clarkston. And the whistle goes. Could it be too much time or lining up offside? They might have. You know. Delay of game, yep. I'll tell you another thing I'm, yeah, it may have just been an honest penalty. Yeah, the time Good you want to fall. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. You also yeah, there wonder, it is. The time you might want a delay of game is to draw them off sides, right. not at that, that time. Might, well, they might have been trying to draw them off sides then, figuring that they're going to throw anyway, but now they're going to punt. Well, that's pretty much what we're doing, looking right <laughs> into that sun as a Troy Colts. Trying to battle it on the sideline. Fourth and about seven, and they're going to punt this one. Shame for the Wolves. They couldn't get anything going on that drive. They ate up a lot of the clock. And oh receiving my. it, and look at this. Not too many Wolves down the sideline, and uh, Chuck, Connor. Chuck Connor almost took off. Well, and Tim Wisser knocked him out of bounds, and I don't know if you remember Chuck Connor last year against, I believe it was Chuck Connor against Adams. Had a couple of big plays. Let's take a look at the punt here by Teague. And right here, he's catching it on the run, head up. You're going to take it to the outside, and there is nobody except right there, number three, Tim Wisser, to knock him out of bounds. Good job by Connor to even catch that. He could yeah. feel pressure coming in from his right side, and he still chose to catch that ball. Here we go. No score and the first possession for the Troy Colts now. Kyle Rance, the quarterback, handing off to his tailback. That's Teron Adams. And that's Teron Adams, 5'10", 180, the senior. Well, highly touted this year. He's got 4-5 speed. I'm looking forward to this because uh, you know, this is the guy who scored the, both touchdowns in the state title game last year. Had a tremendous season. And uh, before the game, Griffiths told us uh, he's at least twice as good as he was then. I'm thinking, well, <laughs> that's going to be pretty hard to do. They're going to showcase him today. And also one of the top 20 players in Oakland County. And a big gain on that first down carry. Second and about six, picked up four. Rance to throw, a quick pattern out to Connor, and Connor close to a first down. He may be short by a couple of yards, but the Colts now on the move on their first possession. Quick hitter, and he had Ryan Chapman backed off a little bit, and you've got kind of speed Connor has. You have to respect him, get the quick hitch, which is the same thing Clarkston did on its first passing play. And a good pattern. He just picked up the first down. So the Colts, two plays, and they pick up the first down. And if you remember, that sets up something in the future, something deep. And that would be Drew Patrick if they do go deep. Patrick, one of the key receivers to look for. Here's Adams on the carry, maybe one or two yards, but it's stacked up right there by the Wolves. And right now, Clarkson's coming out with uh, their version of a Catholic League defense, not letting you run on them. Gain of a yard, it'll be second and nine coming up now for the Colts. 4-10 left here in the first quarter, no score. And the Colts on their first possession. Ball at about the 40-yard line. Second and nine for the Colts. Kyle Rance with an eye formation. The man in motion is number 21, McCormick. Rance, quick pattern, and he hits Drew Patrick out there. Patrick close to a first down down the sideline. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to give McCormick a lot of credit for the gain after the catch on that. If you watch that play, he goes in motion, and it's really a pick play. I don't know if you're going to be able to see from here. It's real close, but... At the time he catches it, right there, you had McCormick. And threw a set, key block to He started spring. to set a pick, and then once the ball was caught, he threw a block. So third and a short two now for the Colts. Man in motion, Connor. High formation, the tailback gets it. Adams, first down and more. 
Close to the 45-yard line. He'll go down at about the 46. I'll give that line a lot of credit. I'll give the fullback Dan Applebaum credit. They opened the hole for him, and he got the first down. When you go back to that previous play, that's the kind of play that future opponents who are scouting this game here write that down and tell the officials beforehand, watch that play and watch a pick because he's blocking before the ball gets caught. And when you really need it, you get, the, you get on the refs and they call the play and pull that back. First and 10 ball on the 46 of Clarkston. So the Colts now getting into Clarkston territory for the first time and Ron Adams in for a loss, a loss of about two. It'll be second and about 12 coming up. Yeah, he went nowhere. Uh, largely because of Ryan Schlapp and two of his friends. Great tackle. It was Ryan Kukla, Kulka also in on that. The offensive lineman returning for Troy, Adam Atkins, a junior, and Nick Jorchowski. Jamal Tsar also. <laughs> easy for you to say. Yeah, easy for me to say. I had to pause there for a moment. One back in the backfield, that's Adams, and three receivers now for Rance. Rance looking, and had his man, Drew Patrick, on a slant in. It was a, a deeper slant, and it would have been close to a first down had he caught it. Wide open, and tell you something, everything you read about Kyle Rance and everything Gary Griffith talks about him, last year he had a little problem because he's so strong that people couldn't catch his balls. He had no touch. Well, that's not the case here. There was a lot of touch on that ball. It was really a perfectly thrown ball. The guy's got to catch that one. And that now brings up a third and long. Third and 12 now. Third and 12. 2.09 left here in the first quarter. No score. Of course, to, to his defense, from the angle he looked at, he was looking at the sun. Fritz sets up to the bottom of the screen, and Appledorn goes in motion. Rance back to pass, has a man open but wasn't looking. And that one he just dumped down to Dave Fritz, but the flags fly, so let's see what happens here. That's in the backfield illegal shift. Yeah, that was Appledorn who was moving. They had two guys moving yep. at the same time, I believe, and that was with uh, Fritz and Appledorn. Yeah, they'll decline that, and that'll, they'll be punting. Yeah, wait. I don't want to walk around you. I don't want to. So the Colts now will probably punt it away. Let's see uh, what the... Wolves decide here after the penalty. Rick, let's go down to the field. We have an illegal shift on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. And it will be fourth and 12 and time to punt for the Colts. It's fourth and 12 for the Colts. So both teams coming up with uh, lengthy drives. The Colts uh, a little bit shorter than the Wolves, but uh, they're playing right about midfield and they have to punt. It's Brian, uh, Brian Searing punting this year for Troy. Searing to do the punting, and back is Wasilk to return. Wasilk won't get this one. Oh, well, he, he does. <laughs> he gets it. It bounces right to him. It looked like it was going to Shatman, and uh, Wasilk uh, upended at about the 25-yard line. Yeah, Rob Benson with the tackle, and uh, you know he thought that was coming to Shatman, and he didn't take it, and then he didn't make the block. And you know it looked like Wasilk had a little bit of an alley if he got one block. Take a look right here when he gets the ball. Ball lands right in between. Now watch Chapman and right here, he's got a set of block. There's one block there, he didn't block another guy over. Actually, probably getting on the wrong guy's case because whoever was supposed to be blocking, Benson, just didn't sustain the block long enough. Ball just shy of the 25 yard line. And the Wolves now send their man in motion. And that's Connolly. Fife, back to throw, feels pressure. And sack for a loss by number five. No. No, that's Kyle Rance got him. That's Rance that got him. Was it Rance? Yeah. It was six. Kyle Rance in there. <laughs> that monster that got him was Rance. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, quarterback Joe. on Sun quarterback. Was Let's take a look here as Fife feels pressure, gets out of there, and here comes the other quarterback, Kyle Take a look right Kyle there, Rance. and you could almost call face mask on Fife trying to ward him off. Rance knew that he had his face mask and oh. immediately let go and didn't want to do yep. that. A loss well, they of had six. each other's face mask. Second and 16 now, on a draw. Chapman finds some room and then finally tripped up down there by number 54, Sebastian Atar. It's a good call there. You don't want to get too crazy dropping back any further with some pass plays right now. You're probably going to have to punt. You don't want to punt out of your own end zone. So Sebastian Atar comes up with a big play there as uh, Chapman almost broke that. Third and 13 now, clock down to 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. It's been a fast quarter, despite a lot of passing, Joe. A lot of passing, but a lot of completions. Yeah. 
I formation, two receivers up top for five. Back to pass. Scrambling, getting pressure, and finally brought down. And there is number 55 for the Troy Colts on the sack, Adam Adkins. And uh, in the end zone with the ball, hoping they're going to give him the touchdown. <laughs> was, see five dropping back, Joe. Yeah, I believe Sims or Petrowski, one of them was in the end zone with the ball, but you see Fife never had a chance. The first man getting back there was Conley, number 40, uh, forcing him out of the pocket. Well, that's the end of the quarter. Oh, boy, those guys. <laughs> it's going to be a long day for Dane Fife if they're going to keep trying to drop back like that. It'll be a fourth and 23 as we head to the other end of the field as we end the first quarter here at Troy High School. And no score as these two teams are battling defensively. Joe, we've seen two pretty good drives, though, for, for these teams to start the season. And as you mentioned, it's been a hot summer. They really haven't had a chance to really gel. And I'm really surprised Clarkston, with that uh, offense, with nobody returning from last year, took that ball as far as they did that first drive. Yeah, penalties helped. And, you know, they really did just get it going better than we would have thought. Here he is, Mark Gomez and the Master Anglers program. Program, Thursday night right here uh, on TCI 63 at 8 p.m. Big fish. You can join Mark Gomez as he takes you on the waters of Michigan on the Master Anglers program. He and his guests will give you advice, all the advice you need to reel in a fish just like the one he caught. It was a big, big fish. It was a big one. That's 8 p.m. right here on TCI 63, Thursday nights. I think he's now Master Angler Emeritus. He could be. You know, been there so I, long. Yeah, we have to talk to him about that. The punt by Teague. Teague gets it out just past the 45-yard line and getting it is number 45 for the Colts. And look at this. A little jitterbug running there by Matt Zemke. And Zemke comes up big. And field position for Troy. And this is... This is why they don't need that, that flashy offense, and they never do. Their defense sets up this kind of field position. The guy gets to field the punt inside the 50, then they get a good return on top of it. Simke going sideways here, but then decides to cut up field at the right time and springs great, it. A couple of great blocks. And he's finally down at about the 25-yard line. Hand off to the first man. And Appledorn. Couple, get a couple yards there for Appledorn. Yeah. Appledorn, another guy last year, kind of filled in where they needed him. He was a fullback when they had healthy tailbacks. When guys like Teron Adams got hurt, he went tailback. Pretty much did it all. Total yards even right now for both teams. As is the score. And the score is even. 0-0 <laughs> zero, here in the second quarter. Just starting here as the clock winds down here in the second quarter. 11.05 left. Rance with the pitch back to Adams. Adams makes his first cut in the backfield and now springs loose. Touchdown, Troy. You can just see that setting up in the start. The way he moves. So Ron Adams and his first cut in the backfield was the key one. That's yeah. where he felt the pressure. Yeah, he just faked in, took it out. They didn't have anybody with the speed to keep up with that move. And it, it's kind of reminiscent of the two touchdown runs he had in the state final game last year. And uh, Griff might be right. He might be twice as good as he was. We saw him on the open in the program with some very nice moves. Right. Let's take a look Let's at this Let's take a one. look. Here he is. He's going to cut in and juke out. Right there. That was it. That sprung him to the outside as everybody took that fake. And then this one here. Just high steps down the sideline. Got him down the sideline. The extra point is good. And the Troy Colts lead early here in the second quarter. Well, field position just does it all for you. Here you're going to see him juke out right there. Missed tackle by Chapman. Not really a missed tackle. He just couldn't catch up with him. Then he's in the end zone. There he is. He had uh, Tim Wisser trying to get him at the goal line. It wouldn't have mattered. He was already in. And Dan O'Meara at the extra point. 7-0. That's your usual Troy final. This year, this offense looks like the kind that's going to score more than 7 or 10 points. I think they averaged about 15 a game last year. But they could, if they can get up a little higher than that, they're going to be untouchable. So the first score coming here in the second quarter with 10.53 left. Teron Adams, 21 yards for the touchdown. The extra point was good. And it's seven to nothing, Colts. And they got uh, Phelan and Wasilk back there to return the kick, and they're going to need a good return from one of those guys to get themselves some field position. 
Because I don't know how realistic it is to mount an 80-yard drive on this defense unless you get a 60-yard pass play. Maybe and maybe some penalties helping yeah. out like the first drive. But you know, if you can get up, the, get up to the 40 or so, a 60-yard drive might be a little more manageable. As I think your offensive line is going to wear out before their D-line does. Here's O'Meara to kick. High and deep to Wassil. He takes it at about the five-yard line. Wassil gets through the pack and almost sprung it. Out Apple to Dorn. the 30, so close to the 30-yard line and good field position. Apple the Dorn best field position it. they've had. Yeah, great field position. Well, yeah, the best field position they've started with. And Apple Dorn, I don't know if we're going to be able to see on the replay at all because he's in the middle of the pack and just grabs his ankles. That prevented another, at least another 10 yards. There he is, right, that's Apple Dorn, right back there. Slowed him up and everybody else finished it off. And the ball is placed at the 25, so that's the same field position they had on the previous drive. Fife to throw, ball tipped and caught. Looked like it uh, might have been caught down there by Wasilk. And uh, who tipped that? Kyle Rance. Kyle Rance. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's all over the <laughs> that place. That alters everything. Wasilk caught it. Let's see, there's the tip. And where is it coming down? That's the thing. In Wasilk's hands. There it is, right That's there. That's two tips, two catches for the Wolves. But Rance is so big, and you know, those quick hitting passes, you can't be lobbing anything like that. And you know, that's, <laughs> that's kind of drive you want, two plays. Two plays, 25 yards, 107 off the clock and the 21 yard run by Adams. And here is a sack by well, the Colts. That's, running back had the ball, but Aaron Miles got there as soon as the ball as got to the, the ball running back's hands. Yeah. It'll bring up a third and about 10 coming up. You know, but again, you know, with Rance, you know, if you want to get over him on a deep pass, fine, go ahead and lob it. On a quick slant, you can't lob it. That's an interception that's going back for a touchdown. Dane Fife, the sophomore quarterback. I'll tell you. He's got his hands full tonight going against we got a last Clarkston year's. timeout. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Early in the year, teams are going to decide Kyle Rance is the quarterback. Let's go at him. We'll throw at him. We'll run at him. Maybe he gets hurt and we get him out of the game. <laughs> and they're going to give up on that idea, and they're going to go away from him. He's going to have it real easy, and Griffith will adjust his defense accordingly, but his presence on the field is going to be noticed throughout the season. And, hey, look at this. Coming up, a new program from these guys. Check this out. The Roadshow video program. It's like a king of hearts. Or no, that was the queen. A queen of hearts. That was the queen. That's a jack of clubs. No, that's a king, isn't it? Well, I think it's a jack or something. But... Anyway, coming up, Roadshow video program program will take you to the Renaissance Festival. That's the Roadshow video Thursday, 9 p.m. right here on TCI 63. That was and, direct from uh, the... Uh, are they heading south already? They're going to the Renaissance Festival. Oh, that's where they're going. Now, well, birds of a feather. Yeah. And uh, birds of a feather, Pat and uh, Bubba. And those those playing cards are the ones they use at the uh, Casino in Windsor also. Is that, yeah. is that what it is? Yeah. And well, the that, Renaissance Festival. That in itself is worth going. If it's good enough for Pat and Bubba. That's right. Mm -hmm. Spend your hard-earned U.S. dollars over there. <laughs> or win some or of Or go there. to the Renaissance Festival and see uh, Pat and Bubba. And dressed as playing cards. I wonder if Bubba knew that was going to be on the show. <laughs> we'll have to find out. Third and ten coming up now for the Clarkston Wolves. So they call the timeout. Let's see what they come up with. Again, Dane Fife, the sophomore quarterback, going against the cha state champions. Excuse me, of last year. Back to pass. Fife has a little time. Throws out of the hands. Right there, though, Gotta right on the that. mark Gotta for Wasilk, and Wasilk knew it. He knew it, yeah. and he was upset. They and called the play, they called the timeout, and it worked. In fact, as you, you see number 56 there, Jamie Muttery, he and the rest of the offensive line did a really good job that time. Fife had enough time to find the receiver, get the ball there. It was in Wasilk's hands. And we talked about the drop before where the Troy receiver was looking into the sun and that might have affected it. This was not in the that sun. That was not in the sun. Give credit to that offensive line of Clarkston to hold off that defense, too, to give uh, Fife enough time. Here's Teague to punt. And taken by Connor. Connor bobbled it momentarily, but look at this. He springs down the sideline, one block, and now they're catching up to him defensively, but look at this. Finally brought down inside the 10-yard line, but a flag is down yeah. on the far side of the field. 
Fuck. I mean, <laughs> well, let's see what happens. It was one of those high school clips. Uh huh. That on the far side of the field where nothing's going no, on. No, it was thrown from there. It, oh, no, this got him free. Oh, it did. Oh yeah, let's this take got a him look free. If we can but it's on one that. of those where he blocked him in the side. There, up, yep, that's a clipping yeah. call. He blocked him in the side, and I think an NFL or a college ref might let this go. 57-yard return is going to be nullified if we can get a look at it again. It's close. Yeah. It's amazing there, that uh, that run. And Joe said that uh, clip uh, sprung him, huh? Yeah, so I thought it did. <laughs> Big break. Let's take a look and see if we can uh, catch it, Joe. All right. Here's your guy with the ball. And we'll try to clear this. <laughs> Maybe not. There's... There it was up high, and there's no way to really touch. You know, you can't <laughs> anticipate that coming. But you saw it. But again, it's one of those. And look at this. This guys. is just great running out here. On the receiving team, 15-yard penalty, first down. It's one of those where you literally are hitting the guy dead on his side, and it's a matter of the official's angle. And the official who threw it was on the other side of the field, which is 40 yards away or 50 yards, depending on where he's standing. But he's not looking <laughs> into the sun either. No, he's, so he saw <laughs> but he's looking through a bunch of other bodies, and yeah. it, it looks quick, and what it, if I was an official and saw it quickly, I'd probably throw the flag too. So the Colts, instead of being inside the five-yard line of Clarkston, go all the way back to about their 25. Appledorn in motion. They give the handoff. Yeah. The second uh, back through, that's and that's uh, nothing there. Adams oh, hit there by number 41, and that was Kolka, Ryan Kolka. Yeah, Kolka started it off and uh, got a little help from his friends at the end, but Kolka got in there quick. He was unblocked. Mitch Hargett also got in on the tackle. Second and ten. Troy offensive line shouldn't be letting that happen, though. Kolka's six foot, 180 pounds. It was a very slow developing play, yeah. and I think that allowed Kolka to keep his ground and wait for the back to come to him. Eight minutes and 15 seconds left here. In the second quarter, Rance back to pass, has time, has a man open, first down and more. And a great play, Drew Patrick, he's the one to look for when he goes long. Drew Patrick's the guy who we got on about dropping the one earlier on the slant. That time, <laughs> it was a strange kind of route. He just kind of walked out and turned around and caught the ball. Patrick now wide open, look at this. And trust us, he caught it. Yeah. There he is with the ball. And they finally converge on him. There to bring him down was number three Wisser, Tim Wisser. First and 10. Ball just shy of the 40 yard line, about the 39 of Troy. Bobbling it, Adams, and he's going to be surrounded. Almost got away from the hold of Mitch Hargett. And Mitch Hargett, number 33 on this tackle there. Hargett was in on it, as was number 43, who's not on our roster, which happens every year. And. Uh, <laughs> That was just, the pitch was behind him. He never had a chance to run the play. That was supposed to go left, and the ball was behind him. And really give Adams credit for getting control of that and not turning it over. Colts, they have been effective in the air. Let's see if they do it again. It's a second and 14 situation now. I formation in the backfield. And split down here is number 34, Belton. They go again to Patrick, Patrick. And we saw that play in the first same quarter, play. same play. This time it's Leon's Belton making, making the block or setting the pick, depending on when the ball got there. But it's getting them some yardage. And once again, you're probably not going to be able to see where he is. Well, there he is. And again, if you're scouting this game, you're going to tell the refs, watch and make sure he's not blocking before the receiver catches yeah. the ball. I know who they play next week. I know that guy's going to be all over the refs early about it. Of course, they're watching our game. Well, that's right, yeah. 6.30 left here in the first half. Rance sends Appledorn in motion. He's got Belton down to the bottom of the screen. Rance drops back down to the middle of the field. Oh, and Adams, header. first down and more. One block there and sprung him out inside the 40-yard line to about the 35. And uh, did you see Drew Patrick try to smart. throw a, a, smart guy, a little though. pick there? <laughs> And he was smart enough, though, not to block Not him. to block. There was a temptation to set a block. But Teron Adams just, he faked right on the route. This was a, an excellent route. Turns into the middle, 
Yeah, watch Ramps at the see. top of your screen. Well, or Patrick. Or Patrick, rather, yeah. Patrick's coming right here, and he decides not to set that block. Yeah. He was going to pick if he came at him, but he did not lay the block out. Because what good's a touchdown if you back it up 15 yeah. yards after? First and 10 for the Colts That's in the Wolf run. territory. Adams now does it on the ground. There's the thing about momentum and the size. Right now, you know, the Clarkston line held up early, and this is a big factor for them late in the first half. They're about to get they're five minutes, 40 seconds away from getting a 20-minute rest. But that huge Troy line is starting to wear them down. And Adams, again, uh, two plays, and now has picked up uh, seven yards yep. on that one, too. Of course, this is typical Troy. You know, they come out a little slow because the other team can match up for a while, then their power just wears you down. Rance takes it himself for the first down. Well, there, that's the Kyle Rance we remember from last year when he wasn't throwing the ball as well. Fakes to Appledorn up the middle. He's so big and strong. Remember, he is starting defensive end. He's going to run you over. He's as powerful a runner as they've got in terms of putting the shoulder down and taking you on. Adams has seven carries for 36 yards now. And we got an official timeout for a measurement. So Rance's carry did not pick up the first down or is close. Let's take a look now on the measurement. And I'm not sure if it matters. You know, if it's fourth and inch, it's a big deal. It'll just, I mean, Rance is, well, that's first down that by is, yeah. See, the guy's 6'6". Six, six, he can just fall forward. That's two yards. Yeah. Big guy, and that's why he plays defensive tackle, too. And kind of stunned us the way uh, Gary Griffith oh, responded to that was, question. I thought he was offended when we said, is he starting? <laughs> starting at defensive end. <laughs> you know. A quarterback starting at defensive end. Well, I, I was amazed at that last year, but uh, this year even even more so when you've got a quarterback, a senior, who uh, you think oh. you'd want to save. Here we one, go. Yes, First one, and ten. Oh, never a chance. Nothing there for the tailback as immediately getting in there, uh, Kolka and... Warchuk, I believe. Also, number 33 got in there again. We're calling those numbers Mitch Hargett. Yep. And I think those guys are coming in from the linebacker spot. The line's getting the D-line of Clarkston, but their linebackers have probably moved up about a foot in their setups, getting through a little quicker. Just means Troy's going to have to go outside with Adams or try to throw the ball. Second and a long nine now for the Colts. One man in the backfield and three receivers split out. This goes to Belton. Belton with a move and uh, gain maybe a four or five. Let's see where they mark it. It is going to be third and about five coming up. Well, you got Chapman with the tackle. Third about four. Teague with the tackle. And Jeff Long got three guys tackling this guy. But Leon's Belton, just a quick hitch out, which is what Troy's been doing. But one thing that's different from last year, last year that was pretty much the entire passing game. Timeout. Colts call timeout now in a third and long. It'll be a long four coming up for the Colts. And a time to think this one over. They'd like to get on the board again with 404 left Plenty here in this time. quarter. Yeah. Plenty of time, and actually with their offense, they can run this thing down to where there's no time for Colts to do anything. We continue our high school coverage next week. The Lake Orion Dragons take on the Adams Highlanders. That's Saturday and Monday at 8 p.m. right here on TCI 63. Don't miss that one. That'll be huge. It'll be great to see the uh, Dragons. Last year they had a great season. And we didn't see them. We didn't see them. We missed them out. Oh, I know. We had that strike-shortened season. We were locked out. And we were locked out of our truck. Is <laughs> We lost the keys, and we were locked out. <laughs> Joe's fault. Joe lost them, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, left them at the casino in Windsor with the guys from the Renaissance Festival. That's it. That, that'll happen. See, you're out there having a good time. Mm -hmm. Won't happen again. They won't invite me back. That's right. Let's see what happens now. Troy Colts on the verge of uh, getting another six here. They had the ball inside the 10-yard line on a great return by Connor, but uh, he was helped by a clip, and that brought that one back. Yeah. There's Kyle Rance, six of eight, 61 yards. Handing off to Adams. Adams hitting the backfield, and then goes down. Well, Let's see where this one is. Hargett got the tackle. Chapman allowed the tackle to happen. He contained him, made him yeah. take it back inside. I think they might have learned a lesson on that touchdown run. Don't let him get to the sideline. That allowed the rest of the defense to come back, recover, and make the tackle. There it is. The handoff to Adams, and he gets hit in the backfield. Right there is where he sees Chapman. Yep. He's got no chance. Chapman made him cut up, and that gave Hargett the chance to get on top of him. Well, and Tron Adams is 5'10", 180. He's not going to run you over. There it is. They're going to go for the 
field goal attempt here. Omira to do the kicking. Omira gets a lot of leg into this one, and it is good. They always have good kickers. Thirty-four yarder, and the Troy Colts got something out of that drive. Ken Phillips says it's thirty-four yards. It's thirty-four yeah. yards. He's been doing a terrific job. I'd like to uh, commend so. Ken Phillips on helping us out here tonight. Our statistician and Joe. I hope you treat him well so that he comes back the rest of the season. For us. Yeah, I avoid him. That's how he likes me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret. Exactly. 321 left here in the first half. The Troy Colts up 10 0 It's that and over the Clarkston Wolves. And the free pop that the nice people at Troy provide for us. That is correct. You know, so all the other schools that we're coming to this year, you know, we, we like that. We do. I thank the Troy uh, staff here helping us up in the press box. It's kind of cozy up here though, Joe, but uh, sorry. I'll just try to avoid you and then uh, you know. I just wish better. they would have built a bigger visiting stands because maybe the by now. Packed tonight. Well that's the home stands and they're up pretty high, but the visiting stands are really low, and so the sun's never gonna get behind them. But we will get <laughs> to see the beautiful sunset. Oh yeah. The kickoff. Wasilk couldn't find it down there and finally picks it up and he'll Get about to the 20 yard line. Yeah, it wasn't quite the return he had last time. Now if you're Clarkston, you got a huge decision. Do you try and have Fife throw a couple passes, try to get a scoring drive, and if he doesn't, you're stopping the clock for free and allowing Troy to maybe get in the field goal range and you now know that they have a decent kicker. Or do you maybe kind of run the clock out, try to end this half and only go in down 10-0? Yeah, we've got uh, the reason why you're seeing that little glare there, you can see the smoke going by the screen. That's the terrific sausages they're oh. cooking up for us at halftime, Those, folks. So far, the best concessions in Oakland County. The pass it, almost intercepted out there by number 21, Frank McCormick. McCormick just, just there at the right time and uh, in and out of the hand. Looking for Wasilk, put a little too much under this, and uh, McCormick knows he should have had that. He hung it up just a little, and he's yeah. going way across the field. Yeah. So that gives plenty of time for the defensive backs that's, to react to that. Yeah, that's one of those maybe the uh, you got to come back to if you're the receiver, too. That's a good drive. It's a little different than a two-play drive. That's a sustained, you know, grinded-out drive. The field goal of 34 yards gave... The Troy Colts a 10 to nothing lead, and now the Wolves got a big gain on that one. It'll be third and short yardage coming up now for Clarkston. Let's see, we may even get a measurement. Well, and again, I think that's where they had to run that one because if they didn't get close, they run again for sure. Yeah, we're going to get a measurement on this one. It's so close, so the Wolves bounce right back, and that's a good sign for these Clarkston Wolves. Uh, again, nobody returning on this team. You've got a sophomore quarterback, and they're showing a lot here in this uh, first game of the season. Yeah, there's not one starter on offense who's ever started a varsity game before. And again, this is a big decision here. Do you want to risk giving Troy the ball back with any amount of time? Or, because Rand's one thing, he can, the guy does have a strong arm. If they just want to send a couple guys deep and throw up a Hail Mary up, he could probably send it 60, 70 yards in the air. And we have seen stranger things happen around here. So just a little less than a yard. So less than a yard now for the Wolves. Now, now they're not even going to waste the time out. They may try to take time off, get the first down, and then run there we out. see the concession. They're Those, working hard down there for us. Look Joe. at all that smoke. Yeah. That, I mean, well, I had one before the game, and. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to halftime because yeah. those things are so good. I wish we did, like, games here every week. Well, Ferndale was pretty good, Ferndale's too. Ferndale's good, too. But we're not there this year. Here's the carry. Let's see where they're going to mark this one. The pile. Number 44. That's close. <laughs> Jeff Long, big fullback. And Jeff Long, a sophomore himself in that backfield. They pick up the first down, so the Wolves get themselves out of trouble now. Instead of punting, they will continue to have the ball with 222 and counting now here in the second quarter. And again, you have to remember, this is a team that picked to finish second in their division behind Troy. Last year, we saw them lose 14 to six and thought they weren't that good. Well, they didn't lose again until they played Troy again. Here's Dane Fife, back to pass, scrambling out of the pocket, almost sacked in the backfield, has time, oh, unloads, but it's intercepted. Intercepted 
it by number 22, Brian Kretschmer. And uh, Jeff Bemis, number 15, if that ball gets over Kretschmer's hands, has a touchdown. A tough throw for the oh, right-hander coming hard. towards this way, yeah. and that's why he hung it up there just a little too long. Oh, you've got to turn your body and still get that thing off. There he almost gets sacked. I believe by Jamal Kassar. Now he turns, throws on the run, just doesn't get enough under it. And you look right here at this guy, there's no one behind him. But a great catch by that guy. Rance back to throw. Colts want to get some more points on the board before the half. And a big run there after the catch by Dave Fritz. Fritz now, the tight end. Got some big shoes to fill himself from last year. I'll say you got, a, call. you got a 6'2 tight end, and he's a midget compared to what they had. McCall was 6'6, six, six, a basketball player, huge hands, long arms, everything. He's doing, does a good job for Fritz the first time he's in there replacing McCall this year. And Troy is already in, almost in scoring position. Another 10, 15 yards, they got field goal range, and they've got a minute 42. First and 10 ball at about the 38 yard line of Clarkston. Connor on the move. The pass goes out to Belton. Belton now scrambling, but a flag down. Well, we'll see what they call this time. If it's a hold, it's got to be on the offense from where they threw it. They had the blocking set up to get a big gain out of that play. Number 44 to stop Jeff Long. There it is. Okay. Bringing him back. Motion man probably was leaning forward. They threw that a little bit after the play started for procedure. Yeah, First usually you get those flags a little bit earlier. On their 42. But you know, this is something we, we were talking about just a couple minutes ago. Clarkson's gamble of throwing the ball there has given Troy a chance to make it a 17 nothing lead at halftime. And I, you know, want I don't think I'm going out on the limb saying you're not going to come back from that. Let's go down the field. Okay, live ball foul. We had six men in the line of scrimmage on the offense. First down repeated. There you see the penalties. Penalty. Clarkson one for five yards, but Troy has three for 30. Hasn't really hurt him on the board too much, but it well, might it might have because of that uh, one that they had inside the 10. So Yeah, I mean, it's only 30 yards, but in a way you can add 57 yeah, you yards can to add that another, 30. That's right. <laughs> In motion, Belton, the handoff to Adams. Adams hiding behind his line, and then springs loose. And gets out of bounds. Yeah, stops the clock with 120 left. Remember, that was still first down repeated. So you're going to have about a second and nine, second and eight here. Watch him hide behind his big lineman and then spring out of there. Well, and Appledorn set up a good block once again, doing a good job, not carrying the ball, just making the blocks for him as a fullback. And Adams does got great patience for a high school tailback. He's not trying to force anything. We've seen that every year you see guys that don't wait for the blockers to get there. Second and nine, Rance back to pass, has plenty of time. Unloads and he's got his man open again. Again to Drew Patrick. Uh, there's a guy that after that first drop, boy, his game is picked up. Yep. Drew Patrick, the man you're going to watch deep for the Colts tonight, and he has done it. Look at this. Nice pass. Drew Patrick, 6'1", right 165, a junior. And again, Kyle Rance, last year that ball comes in a lot faster. This year he's learned some touch. Clock down to one minute coming up, and uh, clock is running. Rance takes it himself on the run. And it'll bring up second down. That's uh, that's become well, a I think very they're trying to get it into field goal position well, again. Possibly. What, that's also become a very popular high school play in recent years. Um, second and six coming up, Joe. See schools, Brother Rice does it. Orchard Lake St. Mary's does it. A few others. They try to catch the defense off guard if they got a quarterback that can run. Just fast sneak it through. And every now and then, I've seen 80-yard touchdown runs off of quarterbacks. Second and six now for the Colts. They'll probably try to. Go to the air, but no, they go to the ground. Adams on the run, and a timeout will be coming up. Clock down to 25 seconds. Well, now, I'm curious how many timeouts they've got left. I, th I thought they only had one. Ten. Which, if that's the case, why not wait till there's three seconds left? You know, just so nothing happens on a kick return. So third and about a yard coming up. Maybe you throw one fade into the end zone. One. And take a look at this show every Wednesday and Friday at 9 p.m. on Channel 63. It's transition as it tackles tough issues like racism, poverty, and current local problems. Jeffrey Miller, your host, has an interesting half hour of program designed to open your mind. Watch transition Wednesday and Friday night at 9 on TCI 63. 
current local problems include Pat and Bubba dressing as playing cards? That, I think, is a major problem that needs to be looked at on the, on the upcoming transition programs. Third, and about one yard with 25 seconds coming up, and it looks like they're going to... I, what do you do? You, 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 have one, more, you one more pass play if you try. I, I you run a face Here's Kyle Rance, 8 of 10, 112 yards. Yeah. And, uh, Last year against he's Adams, improved quite a bit, he threw it? for like 120. And we figured that had to be a Troy record for a single season. So It's a different team this year. Yeah, I mean, Troy putting the ball in the air is just uh, is we're not the, used to. The big power running backs they used to have. Here's Adams on the carry. Picks up. The first down, so that'll oh. stop the clock All for the right. chains. Now, do you come up and try to throw a fade real quick? Yeah. This so is... you do have time to run some plays here, wow. too. 21 seconds, you see the clock, full house in the backfield, and two tight ends. As we point out every year, Gary Griffith has about as much to do with the offense as we do. Uh, he's the defensive coach. He's the head and coach. And they throw it in the ground, and uh, is that legal that'll bring now? up a... Okay, well, second down now in 16 seconds. That must be a new rule because I know that last year you couldn't do that in high right. school. You could do it in college in the pros. Yep. All right, now do you... I think it makes sense. You, yeah. you, might, you might as well be able to do that. Well, the other way that you uh, stop the clock is you turn and have a guy stand and throw it over his head out of bounds. I have one time seen an innocent bystander get their nose broken with that. So this is a little better. Well, get the guy out of the field there. Then, if he's well, no, he was a chain guy. He's a chain guy. Rance to throw, and that's the problem you have. If you don't go for the field goal, you could come up with an interception, well, and it is. Rance threw behind the intended receiver, well, and Clarkston comes up with the interception. Yeah, that's where, you know, not to overly second guess, but I guess that's our job. Uh, you throw the fade pattern. You throw the fade pattern in the back of the end zone. It's a touchdown or an incompletion. Right. No one's ever intercepted a well-thrown fade. Unless Bill, maybe Dion did it. They'll go forth with the interception, number 24. Well, Let's take looking, a look. looking for Drew Patrick all the way. A little bit behind him there. Yeah. Patrick was running from left to right, so that was behind him, and go forth yeah. was right there to pick it up. So the Colts come up empty-handed on that drive. Looked like they were going to get in at least for a field goal and tried to maneuver the clock where they could get in for six. But the Wolves didn't happen. Oh, the Wolves dodged a huge bullet. The Wolves bullet were hungry on that They're one. not coming back from 17 nothing. Yeah. They don't have a chance of coming back from that. They have a chance from 10 nothing. That's manageable. 10 nothing is two scores, so they could come up on top. And that'll do it. That'll end the first half of play here at Troy High School. Exciting first half for the Troy Colts and a promising first half for the Cluxton Wolves. It's about what everyone expected. And once again, this is the number one team in the state. Last year, we, they did the same thing to Clarkston. And like I said, Clarkston didn't lose again until they played Troy again. As Gary Griffith walks off with a 10 to nothing lead, we'll take our break right here. Halftime at Troy High School. The Troy Colts, 10, and the Clarkston Wolves, nothing. school football is back and channel 63 is the place to see it every week this fall tci sports travels the oakland county area to find the game of the week our next game features two teams on the rise the lake orion dragons taking on the adams highlanders that's the tci sports game of the week next week saturday and monday on channel 63 I wrote a letter to TCI because of the kind service and the kindness that was given to me when we needed service. I'm a district manager for Family Dollar Stores here in Detroit and Pontiac. And being the manager, district manager over 16 stores, it's important for us to maintain good customer service day in and day out. If you don't give good service to customers, you don't maintain good service, you don't maintain a good company. And uh, TCI, in my book, has uh, certainly represented customer service to the nth degree. Halftime here at Troy High, where the Colts lead 10 to nothing over the Clarkston Wolves. And it's been, uh, Joe, a very defensive struggle so far. But uh, the Troy offense has been uh, been doing the job, even though it's a low-scoring game. Here is the touchdown, as we see Taron Adams, uh, Taron Adams, Adams, excuse me, coming up with it. Little take it in, take it out. Now he's going to take it out one more time right here and just dodge one more tackler. 
Great run by Tron Adams. Same thing we saw in the Silverdome last year in the state championship game. And a great run there. Made it 7 to nothing with the extra point. And then a field goal made it 10 to nothing, a 35 or 34 yard field goal. And that was the defense setting up the field position for that. And you want to talk about defense? That's defense. Yep. You, Absolutely no and, rushing really for well, the uh, Wolves. They have some passing there for uh, Dane, but uh, he's only come up with 57 yards. Uh, you know, uh, or excuse me, 34 yards passing. Time of possession is misleading, and it, sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Today it's not mattering much. Passing yardage for Troy is an upset. If you saw those total yards, and I believe it was, what, 34 or something for, uh, or 32 total yeah. for, uh, for Clarkston. Clarkston. Remember at one point in the first quarter, total yards was even at 28? So that's four yards since that, and Troy went about 120, 130 after that. There's Kyle Rance, 8 of 12 for 112 yards. And we are underway now Hoops in the kick. second half. A short kick out to about the 35-yard line, and the Colts pick it up at about the 40, so good field position for Troy on their first possession of the second half. And I believe that was Brian Kretschmer who picked up the short kick. So the Colts start on their own... 39-yard line, and great field position for Kyle Rance and his offensive yep. unit. And we saw that Clarkston, both both their offensive and defensive lines, wore down as we got deeper into the first half. Now they've had a little time to rest. They've got to come up big right now, or Teron Adams is going to add to that rushing total. Yep, 13 carries for 54 yards. Rance to throw, has plenty of time, and has Patrick open. Will they give him the forward motion for the first down? He's going to be very close to a first down. Now he just found his own defense and sat down in the middle of it. And I don't know what Patrick's got receiving, but they're not covering the guy. Well, Patrick highly touted coming into this season. And they have been going to Patrick quite a bit. Patrick, four catches, 51 yards. Before that one. Before that one, now five for 60. Of Rance's 13 passes, seven of them went his way. There's the first man through. Appledorn picks up the first down and a very strong run by the fullback that time. Only, I think, his second carry of the game, but he's had a strong game as a blocker. And uh, Clarkston's in trouble right now. If, again, you're not coming back from 17 nothing on these guys. If they don't come up with a defensive stop right now, you don't know what the score could end up being. Appledorn, 5'11", 190. And a senior leading the way there for... Ron Adams in the backfield as he is the lead back. Two receivers split pro formation. Ball at the 43 of Clarkston. Rance pitches quickly out to Adams. He's hit in the backfield, but manages to dive forward close to the line of scrimmage, but he loses just a little bit. The Whistler, made, the yard. Whistler made the stop, but uh, Joe the game kind of slowed him up a little bit, forced the tackle to happen. See, that's just a little bit too deep of a pitch on the option. And there's the gain slowing him down. Whistler comes up, finally makes the uh, actual tackle. And a loss of a yard on the play. It'll be second and 11 coming up for the Colts. Well, and just keep an eye down there because that's Patrick, and that's who they've been throwing to all day. Eye formation. Patrick down at the bottom of the screen. They're looking that way. No, they go down the middle. Complete to Belton. And Belton picks up the first down. Wow. He went up for that one, Joe. Hope we we'll see that again. Leon Belton, a senior. Great catch. And, and if they can throw like this, this team won't lose this year. Look at that. Right on the money. Nice up touch. over everybody, too. And, you know, the fact is, these receivers, you know, we're talking about Rance, and he deserves all. They're getting open. Yeah. There's nobody on these guys when they catch the ball. The pitch quickly back to Adams. Quick cut in the backfield and scrambles forward for maybe four or five yards. Got quick feet. It's hard. These guys are trying to tackle him around the legs. You know, he's he's not real big. Maybe you go for the waist because those feet are moving too fast to try to get any kind of grip on. Second and a long six now coming up for the Colts. Just under 9.30. Left here in the third quarter. Colts up 10 0 now. They're showing and the on the move again. Ball at about the 24 yard line. Yeah, showing that they deserve that number one ranking. 
Fort Se yeah. Second and long six. We're going to say, fortunately, go. according to Gary Griffith, the newspapers are just for entertainment. There it is. Adams in the whole right side of that Troy Colt line. He just went right behind him, and they plowed forward. Yeah, you look at Adkins, a two-way player, leading the way on the block in there. Yeah, they're running time off the clock, too. Yeah. Third and about four coming up. Probably in... Probably go for it if you have a fourth down situation. Although I wouldn't be surprised to see a run coming at you here, just so if you have to kick a field goal, you've got a little bit better of an angle. That that's a nasty angle from that close in. Pro set. Rance takes it himself, bounces out, and gets close to a first down. Looks like he picked it up, Joe. Yeah, you can't Let's see where they mark it. It'll be hard to tell from here. Again, he's Six foot six, just lean forward to get you the extra yardage. It's going to be fourth and one. And I, don't see a, I don't see a kicker going out there yet. That would be a, a real tough angle. Yeah. Fourth and one. They're going to go for it. The running game has been working well on this uh, drive here. Well, I think Griffin was too. The 13 nothing is still a two possession game. 17 nothing puts it away. Full house in the backfield. It's Adams diving over the line. Picks up the first down. Good awareness of Adams. He saw number 42, Warchuk, get in and get low, where if he can get his legs, he can flip them out, not allow him to get the first down. And he dove then, realizing you only have to get inches. And that's about what he got. Teron Adams in the first game of the season, getting closer to that 100-yard mark. And it's a first and 10, just shy of the 15-yard line for the Colts. There he is at 63 yards now on 17 carries. Well, he should get it unless they get a lead where they start putting the reserves in. Pitch back to Adams. Adams hitting the backfield, bounces out, and he is hit for a loss. A big loss, too. Loss of about five. Yeah, well, Jeff Long led the way, slowed him up, and everybody else came in, and the blocking broke down. Yeah, four-yard loss that time for Adams. And you see Tim Wisser leading the defense. I don't know what happened with all the blocking here, but all of a sudden you got Long slowing him up, or Wister actually slowing him up and Long finishing him off. And uh, there's just no, none of those guys got blocked. And that clock is running down to seven minutes and underneath that seven minute mark now. Adams, deep in the backfield, gets back to the original line of scrimmage or close to it. And it'll bring up a third and long now for the Colts. Well, that time it was Warchick, and we're going to have third, maybe even 11. And by the time this drives over, we're going to be halfway through the third quarter. That's, uh, that's your classic Troy football. This is what we're used to. Not a whole lot of passing. You never stop the clock, and you never let the other team have a chance at beating you because they don't have the ball. 6'6 quarterback, senior Kyle Rantz. Third and 11. Rants back to throw. Pumps and goes deep into the end zone. Open Patrick. Touchdown as he just stepped into the end zone. Wow. There's a fade pattern we were talking about in the first half. But once again, Patrick gets open. And uh, Clarkston, it might be too late now, but they're going to have to adjust their coverages. Because these guys, that's too easy. A 16-yard pass, Kyle Rance to Drew Patrick. I'll tell you something, Kyle Rance, you know, you can't even, you can't say it enough. Last year he did a credible job. They had such a great defense and a solid offense that his basic job was not to lose the game. As they get the extra point, and now it's a three-possession game. Every now and then he'd make a big play, but he wasn't the focal point of the offense by any means. You throw his improved passing ability into the mix, this is... A much improved team and to be that much improved off of a state championship is kind of unheard of. 17 to nothing. Rants to Patrick 16 yards. The extra point good. And the Troy Colts lead 17 to nothing with 612 left in the third quarter. And Joe, they ate up all the clock in that one. We're halfway through the third quarter now. And you have to remember that kind of long drive. Where is everybody Jared out? The, the Clarkston defensive line is worn out, and I don't know how many of those guys are going both ways, but look, they're, they're exhausted right now. And the size factor, they held up for a while early, but they're just getting plowed, and it just kind of steamrolls on you. There to receive, we see 
It'll be Wasilk and number 32, Phelan. Brad Phelan on the far side. Uh, Wasilk, Wasilk on the left. Wasilk almost broke one earlier. And uh, they need one right now. They, they need darn near a touchdown from him. O'Meara to kick. And it is deep back to about the five yard line. Phelan has it. Phelan busts through the middle and down at about the 30. If he wasn't tripped up, he could have gotten at least to the 40, maybe the 50 yard line that time. Yeah, he had a hole and James Feeney closed it up for him. He had more yardage coming after that. You see these two guys gonna both want the ball, it ends up. <laughs> Phelan gets it, just takes it right up the gut, gets some good blocking there, gets through the hole, and you're going to see number 30 come up and make the stop from the left side. So the Wolves have their first possession, and Troy on their possession, 12 play, 61 yards, and then the 16-yard pass from Rance to Patrick topped it off, 5.48 off the clock. Oh, gee. Hit in the backfield, and say hello to number 76, Steve DeHorn, as Chapman... Didn't get a chance to do anything on that one. This is, <laughs> these guys are good. I mean, it's like you're over, we're overstating it, but wow, are they good. They're big, they're quick, and they're not letting up. It's like, you know, they get this lead and they're getting hungrier because of it. Loss of two, second and 12. Clarkston Wolves looking over the line. And the handoff, and another loss of maybe another yard that time on the carry. Shepman again. It's just more of the same. You know, if, do you, do you want to try to throw and risk the sacks and risk turnovers? Or are you going to try and run the ball, which you can't do, but at least you can take some time off the clock? At that time, we had number 87, Dave Fritz, the tight end, coming in there making the stop. And the Wolves have not had positive yardage the ground. I don't think they've had positive yardage on a play. On a play? I think it might have been a run play, really. Wow. Let's take a look down on the field. Well, I don't here. know when they've had a complete yeah, legal procedure. Illegal procedure. They're going to decline that, I would assume, aren't they? Or are you not allowed? Yeah, it's a dead ball foul. Gary Griffith looks on with his team leading 17 to nothing here. 4.41 left in the third quarter. And he gives a dead ball foul. Full start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Uh, third down. Dead ball foul should be second down. Shouldn't it? That should be second down, and the officials made a major. Well, no one caught it on the Clarkson side either. Kurt yeah. Richardson not saying anything over huh. there. There's Fife back to throw. Got a man oh. deep and overthrew him. Intended down there for Wasilk and uh, he Fife's slow getting up too. Yep. That's something you worry about too. You've got a sophomore in his first game. He's getting killed on every pass play. Not only can he get hurt, he can, his confidence has got to be hurting, but again, he's, you know, small consolation. He's not going to have to face a defense like this the rest of the year, at least until the playoffs. But you don't want to get him hurt either. And a punting situation now for the Wolves. Ball at about the 23-yard line, and the Clarkston Wolves forced to punt and deep in their own territory. The punt is off by Teague, taken by Connor. Connor waits a second to set things up, and he's hit right at the 50. So great field position again for the Troy Colts as they start at midfield. Yeah, well, good coverage there by Clarkston, though. They punted into a corner, forced him to bring it back to the middle. Kind of hard for a guy like Connor, who's got speed, to, to break anything there, and I'm sure Clarkston was afraid of that as well. Don't forget to tune in next week. Another great matchup. The Lake Orion Dragons take on the Adams Highlanders. That's Saturday and Monday right here on TCI 63 at 8 p.m. Game's so nice, we show it twice. That's right. We get those VCRs rolling. First and 10, Colts at the 50-yard line. Rance back to throw, has Appledorn open, and Appledorn close to the first down. He'll be just shy. And you look at the clock, 350 left. Clarkston's not going to see the ball again until the fourth quarter. By then, they'll probably be down 24 0. This is a. Uh, you, you know, you never think of a Troy offense as a machine. You think of their defense, but they got it going both ways. Their offense on a roll. There's Drew Patrick, six receptions, 76 yards. 
to Patrick alone and one touchdown. Second less than a yard. Handoff, Adams, Adams breaks through. Touchdown to Ron Adams. I was wrong about something. Clarkston will get the ball again in the third quarter. <laughs> wow. The Colts are worried the, about eating the clock. Of blocking. Appledorn leads the way through. Great block by DeHorn, and then the speed takes over, and none of these guys can catch Adams. Adams, 41 yards for the touchdown, and the Troy Colts now on their way to a big victory over the Clarkston Wolves. And this will not do anything to uh, change their number one ranking. Extra point is no good, so it stands at 23 to nothing. Well, they needed that. They're, they had to have something that they had to work on for next week. <laughs> and that'll be it. So Adams has his 100 yards for the evening on that run. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't know how much more we're going to see of it. Yeah, we may get a uh, good chance here for Gary Griffith to put his second team yeah. in and get some work that way. I'll tell you what's kind of curious, you know, last year, all these years. I think he deserves a water break, huh? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> last year they had injuries to all their tailbacks, so nobody got over 1,000 yards. It's like the first time in five or six years that didn't happen. Of course, ends up being good. They win a state title. If he stays healthy, that yeah. the streak is back. And he'll stay healthy if his line blocks for him. He was thanking Don McComb there on that one as uh, McComb, one of his blockers, came in. Two plays, 50 yards, one minute off the clock. We saw the other drive beat up all the clock. This well, time, they do it in one minute. Well, they've had two two of their scoring drives were like 10 or 11 or 12 plays, and two of them were two plays, and both because Adams got long runs. Take it either way. Yeah, it's got to make you happy as a coach, knowing you can strike that quickly and then also eat up the clock when you need it. They're back to receive again. It'll be Phelan on the far side and Wasilk on the left side. And kicking off this time is Quisenberry, Jim Quisenberry, to do the kicking. Taken at about the 10 yard line. Wasilk right up the middle of oh the my. field. Wasilk makes oh. the cut. Look out. It'll be one man to try to catch him, he and that's might. Benson. Benson trying to get him on the angle, and Wasso gets away. And the Clarkston Wolves strike quickly. Wow. He's come close before, as did Phelan, and that time they got through. And I think you got to go for two here. If you're thinking ahead, anyway. Take a look. Wasilk right up the middle. Breaks the one tackle. Then it's a foot race with Rob Benson, and he wins it to the end zone. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to Well, I got to get on here. Wow. A lot of scoring here in the third quarter. 23 to 6 now, and let's see what the Wolves do on their extra point attempt. I'm thinking you go for two only because if you get eight two more times, it's 24 points. You know, so. Only one point helps them a whole lot. Yep. Roughly a 90-yard return. I'm not sure of the official. There's five. He's, he's got out. He's, he's going to take it, it himself. Oh, he Angling, and he gets yeah, in. He does. Wow, good run. Good run by Fife. He had some room and then decided to go for the very corner and got in. So Dane Fife, the sophomore, showing some experience there. Yeah, and that... <laughs> Well, you know, all of a sudden, it looked like he had it easy when he rolled out, and all of a sudden it closed up, and I don't know how he actually got in. Let's take a look here. You're going to see him look to go right here, and it's not there. He has to take it out and, and just kind of sneak in. Yeah. Got a little bit of a block. And again, at 23 to 8, you do this two more times, you're actually winning. Of course, <laughs> the odds are that they're not going to score two more times, and, you know, kick returns are not the way you want to be scoring. Yeah, you really need to put something together. Well, yeah, that, five that just talking. They scored. <laughs> talking to his offensive coordinator down there, and head coach Richardson comes over too. And you know what? And, and they're making me look smart again because they still aren't going to run an offensive play in the third quarter. So thanks a lot. <laughs> Needed that. Well, you called it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Let's see if you are the uh, prophet that you are. Oh, I wish I was. So Clarkston picks up their first score of the evening. 
on a big return and back to return. Look at <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> Teron Adams back to return. Along he's not going to get a chance. Connor. No, they <laughs> onside decide to give the onside kick right to the Colts and picking it up there. Was 86 Searing Brian Searing. Brian Searing the punter of the punter and a great field position again for the Colts. Ball at their own 48-yard line. Yes. It's a tough call to make that onside kick there. Yeah. Ought to try to make him earn it, kick him deep. Yeah, I mean, if it works, if it works, it's, you know, hey, it's a genius call, so. There it is, 89 yards officially on the return. And the Colts and running right at him on the first down and uh, gain of maybe a yard. Second and nine coming up. You know, there's got to be a little, a little more emotion anyway on Clarkston's part, and that can help a little bit. I think you can overestimate the effect the motion has on you. It's only going to carry you so far, but right now they've got some momentum, and they might be able to carry that into at least forcing Troy to punt once here. After that, they're going to have to take care of it themselves. Here, go. here come the Colts at midfield. To the tailback, Adams, Adams holds up and then takes off for the first down. What a great stutter step he had, waited for never something stopped. to open up and then took off. Never never let his feet stop moving. They had him wrapped up a couple times and he just kicks away. And they got a Clarkston player injured right now. And that is a big player too, Haggard. Haggard has been all over the place defensively. You've said his name all night on tackles. The Colts have scored twice here in the third quarter, and Clarkston has answered once. 23 to 8 the score now. Well, and again, you know, we talk about in the future. Clarkston next week plays Pontiac Central. Their second toughest game all not season. An easy, not an easy opponent can there. Go 0-2 and finish 7-2 and, and make the playoffs. And the rest of the way, you never know. And we're in the third quarter with a timeout now. Troy leads 23 to 8. I wrote a letter to TCI because of the kind service and the kindness that was given to me when we needed service. I'm a district manager for family dollar stores here in Detroit and Pontiac. And being a manager, district manager over 16 stores, it's important for us to maintain good customer service day in and day out. If you don't give good service to customers, you don't maintain good service, you don't maintain a good company. And uh, TCI, in my book, has uh, certainly represented customer service to the nth degree. And we're back at Troy High School. Third and one now for the Troy Colts. Troy on the Clarkson. We're missing. Phelan went off the field, and hopefully he can come back. Or Phelan? Oh, excuse me. Uh, Hargett. Hargett. Ron Adams, Ron Adams gets the first down, though, as we're checking first rosters. <laughs> Hargett, that is correct. Over the 40-yard line of Clarkson, first and 10, Troy. Well, Hargett. Phelan's family will be watching. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll say, wait, uh, did we he get hurt? We didn't know about that. The Colts pick up the first down, and they're on their way again now, deep and but deeper into uh, Clarkston territory. Again, we were talking about that Clarkston schedule. Play Pontiac Central next week, who in the Oakland Press is actually ranked second in Oakland County. Troy, for some reason, is third in Oakland County, even though they're number one in the state. South Lions number one, but you can't start off with a tougher schedule. Yeah, Clarkston uh, with one of probably one of the toughest <laughs> two games anyone's going to see to start the season. Brant's handing off to Adams. Adams again, hit right at the line of scrimmage at his feet, and he takes off, and it was Jeff Long right there. Jeff Long tried to stop him, and they well, got away with a stutter step and took off for some more. Jeff Long's been in on a few tackles, and if Hart gets out of there, he's going to have to do a little bit more. Talking about Troy's schedule, next week they play at Birmingham Seaholm. You see the uh, first downs this half, Troy obviously is controlling that. Then they've got Rochester, Adams, Pontiac, Northern. They kind of, after Seaholm, don't have to worry till Waterford Kettering, who was the only team that beat them last year. So the revenge factor ought to be enough there for them. Second down and seven. Coming up on 45 seconds left here in the third quarter. That's a double pass. That's a Patrick. fumble, too. And now, now they whistle it. Yeah, he was going to throw that deep, I think. That yeah. should have been a lateral. Uh, Patrick may have uh, thrown that downfield. I, don't know I think that was a lateral. They're going to mark it out of bounds. Yeah. Where it went out. The uh, 
Official on the far side saw it, and he's going to say, let's mark it where it went out of bounds. Yeah. And that's what they're going to do. They had a guy going back. down. They were going to throw. Well, yeah. So third and ten now for the Colts. Ball uh, at the 40-yard line and 39 seconds on the clock. Rance back to throw. Downfield has Patrick. First down for the Colts, and he's crunched down there by the Wolves. Man, he, he just, it's the same route. He runs them real slow. Jay Ritz, Richardson, one of the tacklers, gives him that final crunch down there. Let's take a look. Oh, I mean, you know, it looks like those old NFL films, things of Raymond Berry and Lance Allworth, these slow guys. And he just gets himself underneath everybody and gets what he can after the catch. Helping Richardson was Goforth, Bill Goforth. And he got nailed, too, though. He's yeah. coming off a little injured. It was that hit by Richardson. He nailed him on the side. Yeah. Hope it's just a cramp. Yeah, it yeah. Messing yeah. Up the leg Charlie there. Horse, a cramp there. First and ten. Rants on the handoff to Appledorn. And not much there for the Colts. It'll bring up a That'll be the end of the quarter. And that'll end. The third quarter play here at Troy High School. And the Colts up 23 to 8 over the Clarkston Wolves. And uh hey, every time you think Troy's in a little bit of trouble, they come up with the big play. They do. They uh, pull something out of their hat. Even on the touchdown that they threw to Patrick that time, yeah. it was a must. They had to come up with it. It was a third down situation. They came up with it. Yeah. Again, don't uh, forget to miss this one here. Transition coming up in the fall. Transition tackles tough issues like racism, poverty, cultural, and current problems. Jeff Miller hosts this interesting half-hour program designed to open up your mind. Watch Transition Wednesday and Friday night at 9 p.m. right here on TCI 63. You know, the other night I saw they had, you know, Roadshow Video Classic yeah. with uh, Master one? Angler. Oh, I love that one. But I'm wondering, are either of those shoes going to hook up with Transition and do a little... Maybe... <laughs> have, have Transition go fishing. Fishing. Transition go fishing. With Master Angler, there's a show there. Welcome back to the game. You should, you, you should be a producer, you know that. I've, you should do something with yourself. <laughs> That's what I've thought. You know, you know. These, you know the, this summer, I mean, like, what'd you do this summer? You waited for you waited for I football moved. season. I waited for football. That's all you I did. You moved, and they even then you even you I were was late waiting moving. for football. But you did move into the TCI viewing area. And I'm and very happy. Thank you. Oh well, you know, because I'm paying your salary now. So. Well, now you get a chance to watch the games. <laughs> Second down and ten. Rance to throw. He's got his man open. The tight end, Dave Fritz. Fritz for the first down inside the ten yard line. They're running the West Coast offense now. The tight end comes out five yard underneath like Brent Jones like catching it. Here. He's Let's looking like Brent look. Jones here catching it and getting eight yards after the catch. Gary Griffith, offensive mastermind. I tell you, <laughs> you watch the Colts. Wow. Work here offensively and defensively, and you think, well, well they're going to be back for that state championship. I mean, if you've seen Troy for as many years as we have, you just, they don't throw, no. ever. You have some big running backs and let the running backs do all the work and let the linemen just pave the way for them. And now the Colts have another uh, another side to their offense. And it's a big passing quarterback, Rance. Kyle Rance. He is, you know, you don't know where, what the rest of the players are in Oakland County, but he might be the most improved player. Around. He is. We saw him earlier in his career, and, uh, and now he's just developed that size and that strength. And it's just incredible. There you go. Let's do that again. What, what did you okay. draw on him? All right, what it's is the that? queen of, of hearts. Okay. And there's like a jack of, what was it, clubs or something? I don't know. I said, I was, that looks like that's something that's, else. But anyway, that's those guys. That looked like a king to me. King. Well, okay, he's a king uh, now. Actually, a crown let's, let's get to reality about these two, if we can clear that. They're both jokers. <laughs> so <laughs> They are. Just watch the road show, if you will. Great program. Uh, they're going to be at the Renaissance festival and they it's have at 9 p.m. Thursdays. We had to kidnap Pat to direct this game because they've gonna been be at the fun, Renaissance I'll tell you what, I, so I watched them put it together and that is going to be a fun show. Is it really? It is. Do they do some of the this jousting? This will be one of your new favorites if oh, you watch wow. it. It will be one of your new favorites. Better than the fishing one. Guaranteed. Wow. Second play of the fourth quarter. Full house in the backfield and two tight ends. Adams on the carry and wrestled down there. Looks like 
43 down there. Who was down there? Number 43 and 86, respectively. They should put Roadshow Video on the pay-per-view channel. Mark Teague down there. They could Clarkson. get rich. They should what? Put it on the pay-per-view channel. Those guys could make a lot of money. Off you. Well, you could, I don't want to admit to that, but yeah. Possibly. <laughs> If you had money, they would make money. Exactly. <laughs> There's Rance, 13 of 17. Incredible. 163 yards passing. Appledorn in motion. Adams gets it. And now down to about the one or two yard line. Let's see the mark. About the two yard line. So that means they can run another 35 seconds off the clock. Take this thing to the 10 minute mark. Or not. Official timeout. Officials call timeout. Let's see. I don't know what, why would, I don't know why they would call timeout down there. They're helping uh, Clarkson get some players off the field. There we go. You're not supposed to call timeout for that unless yeah. they're hurt. Let's see, now they call another timeout. Let's see what's going on here. Could be an equipment, equipment problem. Could be an equipment problem. They're trying to get to. Well, they I've never seen an official call a timeout to get another player back on oh, the field. Elbow they could be. You know, again, Let's we were talking happened. about Rance being uh, probably the most improved player. Another Patrick could be the top wide receiver in Oakland County. He's yeah. only a junior. The top receiver last year was a junior, a guy named Dave Soffern from Brother Rice, but he's quarterback this year. And now Patrick the should be. call timeout. Yeah, now, after all that, they want to know what's going on. They're going to call timeout. But, you know, Patrick could end up being the best receiver in Oakland County this year, at least statistically. Well, if, if Rance keeps throwing like this and if uh -huh. uh, the Colts find themselves in this position I mean, where they you, can throw. And if you help put your, you know, of course, you get leads like this, you don't have to throw a lot. Remember, Clarkston's one of the better teams they're going to play. They're not going to have to do as much throwing. Gonna, the games are going to be put away sooner, except for, you know, strange things do happen. But they don't have the tough schedule. I mean, it's going to be hard for them to have a tough schedule just because how many teams are there that are as good as they are. Next week's an interesting game because they played Birmingham Seam. And here's an interesting program you can catch right here on TCI 63. It's the Oakland Press Perspective with Oakland Press Editor Neil Monroe as he hosts a program designed to enlighten you on issues that affect Oakland County, such as the Roadshow video. The Oakland Press Perspective airs Friday night at 8.30 p.m. right here on TCI 63. Uh, the Troy people want to talk to that guy, too, because the News and Free Press put Troy number one in the state, and the Oakland Press put Troy third in the county, and they want to know what Ohio teams are in Oakland County, because how did that happen? I think they did that just to get people to buy the paper and see, you know. Well, everyone, people buying the paper anyway, because there's a strike going on. Controversy. And off Adams, bucks up and cuts outside. Adams took it straight up and then said, oh, there's nothing there. I think I'll stand her outside. I don't think I want to get hit. I think we'll walk in. Two-yard touchdown run. Wow. And Adams just continues his fine evening. Let's take a look. You know, I mean, this is you know, all we hear about coming into this is their defense. They got this guy at running back, which we knew for sure. Hey, this is the real deal. You got this quarterback that we're thinking, well, we'll, we'll see how much improved he is. We have, and they've got a great receiver. Their offense is equal to their defense right now. And the extra point is good. So Adams picks up his third touchdown of the evening. And the Troy Colts make it 30 to 8 over Clarkston. Well, again, next week they have an interesting game in that they play Seaholm, which is like all their starters back on offense, and it's considered like the top combined offensive team in the county because they've got three-year starters at all the skill positions. And you got that offense going against this defense, and you see which one wins out. The difference might be, though, that the Troy offense is so awesome that Seaholm's got to come up with a defense to stop. Yeah, used to be that, you know, what a job that uh, offensive line for Troy has done. They had some questionable positions that they were thinking about, and uh, they weren't sure about some positions well, like uh, linebackers, center. tight end, center. Center, we kept hearing he was trying three different guys. You yeah. figure we're going to see some fumbled snaps. Haven't seen one of those yet. Haven't seen a quarterback sack yet. And another, you know, back to the 10 play drive thing. 10 Let's plays, time 52 off yards, clock. 424, a two yard run by Adams. So that's easy to figure out 5.2 yards a, a, a carry. What are you, a genius? Play. I, I tell you. And slipping and falling. Uh, tough break there for Clarkston. But, you know, again, last year, 
you play Troy, you figure if you can get into double digit scoring, maybe you can beat him. That's how Waterford Kettering beat him, 10-7. Get lucky, you break a kick return like Clarkston did or something like that, you're in the game. Because they're not gonna score more than 10, 15 points a game. Their average was 15. They, they scored 30 points against Clarkston. This is not, you know, some class D uh, no-name school they're yeah. playing. They're playing the Wolves. <laughs> and the Wolves now trying to get something going offensively. Dane Fife, the sophomore quarterback, to work. Rolling out. Has time. Now getting pressured. Unloads downfield and incomplete. He heard the footsteps. Yep. Intended down there for Chapman. Well, there was a lot of pressure coming from behind by Joe Conley. He had to get rid of that ball. And Troy defense is not letting up. What a tough way to start the season yeah. for the sophomore quarterback against I'll tell you, the next number week. one team ranked in the state. And yeah, well, next week he's got plenty of Central. Next week too, yeah. They won't be as big. They'll be faster. So that's going to kind of mess up with them a little bit. The third week, though, they, they'll play Pontiac Northern. Boy, it's going to seem easy. And an interception, no, in and out of the hands of number 54, Atar. Sebastian Atar, that time, Atar, caught him off Atar. guard. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah, he was covering the guy. He was watching the receiver, yeah. and the ball came to him instead. Your Fife looks off. It's, that, it's not even a three-step drop, really. He just you know, really steps off center, turns, and looks. And Griff was... I guess that's happiness, contentment. Um, you, you're not going to see much emotion on Gary Griffin. No, he's stone face. He's, uh, he's a head coach. He's exactly. looking like a head coach. Five oh, going deep, and is that interference? Has We're looking be. for a flag. No. The pass was not catchable. Doesn't matter. That's it. High school football. The ball does not have to be catchable for it to be interference. The last completion that Fife had was a tip pass, and that was one that Wasso dove for, and it was a no gain. It was wow. one at the line of scrimmage. There is the pass. There it looked like it was catchable, but uh, again, it doesn't have to be. Have and they made be. it so the refs don't have to make that determination. They're calling it incidental contact. Huh. But well, yeah, no I don't think it matters. No breaks for Clarkston, I guess tonight. There's Teague to punt. End over end, not a bad punt as it's taken at about the 45 yard line and hit out of bounds right there. Well, that number was 51, yep. Zemke with the ball. And Joe Roy on the tackle. Let's see who comes out on offense. And yeah, we have a change at quarterback. Quisenberry. So Quisenberry comes in, that's number 10. And, uh, uh, if he's any relation to Dan, you like might want to look for the sidearm. Submarine ball. Yeah. Timeout called by the Colts. Come out for uh, Troy, so you got to see who's in there. Yeah. Got to introduce everybody to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so the Colts call timeout. They lead 30 to 8 with 9:56 left here in the fourth quarter, Just and it's been all Colts. The concession stand is still open for your convenience. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. Ken Phillips. What'd you say? Quisenberry in relief. Does that make this a safe situation? That's right. And uh, But I think because, because we're of the, lead. the lead and, you know. I don't know if Quisenberry will get the save. But, but this does equate to three full innings. Nine, you know, ten minutes. Now, if it was like a Henneman in there, he would give up the lead and then he could get the win. <laughs> and they'd trade him to Houston. And then they would. <laughs> Next week, it's Lake Orion. The Dragons taking on the Highlanders. Saturday and Monday at 8 p.m. Watch for that one. Is that on before or after Roadshow video? I don't know if they're on the same night again. Oh, man. Let me check for you. Is that, you know. No, they're not. See, last year we had that great one-two lineup for you. And if you, and if you call in More for it, people were watching that than we're watching Friends. <laughs> Wisenberry cuts up field. Good decision and angles towards the sideline to pick up good yardage on his first carry. Well, he did everything they wanted except he didn't stay in bounds. <laughs> Yeah. But he's sitting there going, you know, I'm getting into some playing time. I want as many plays as I can get. Here he picks up take, five. Yeah, just take a look at the basic option. Make to the fullback up the middle. This time Zemke in at fullback. And nobody take committed to him, so he decided to take it upfield. Man, you're running short side of the field. It's going to be hard to pitch out. And I don't think a quarterback wants to pitch on his first play in there anyway. Second and five now. Jim Quisenberry handing off inside. Look at all this room. Joe Conley has 
a touchdown for the Colts. 44 yards for Joe Conley and the Colts' second team. Another two play drive. Oh my. Joe Conley takes it inside. This is just a trap play, Joe. Tra- yeah, I mean, inside, and he takes off. Look at you see the guard pulling. Just trap. bounces. He's waiting for contact. He didn't even bounce off anyone. He was waiting for that to happen. You see uh, Brian Searing lining up downfield. I believe at a tight end made one block for him. Other than that, just Conley taking off. Yes. The snap is made, the place is there. The and the extra point is good. And that was O'Meara with the extra point, and the Colts add to their lead. 37 to 8. Well, we didn't think we were going to need to look at this thing, but we might soon. Look. The mercy rule in high school football. Anytime in the second half, if the score differential reaches 35, which would happen on the next touchdown, uh, the clock will not stop on out of bounds or incompletions, scores, or a fair catch or anything. You're going to just have a running clock. So if Troy scores again, we're going to have that situation. We really didn't think we were going to need that today. We might not yet, but we really didn't. We didn't think we, we were going to have to look at the I think we did see it one time last yeah. year, and it was I think it was right here when the Colts were playing somebody. We weren't here last year. We weren't. No, we were there. That's right. That's right. Well, where was Two it? years ago, and I probably wasn't here then. Yeah. You were uh, watching. You were watching Beavis and Butthead because that's when you—that's when it first came on. It felt pretty cool. That's when you were telling me about that show. And you still haven't seen it? No, I've watched it. And you like it? Yeah, well, no. our director Pat Collar got me hooked now. He should be. You know, it's—it's it's better than Ren and Stimpy. They're great actors. Here's the kick. And it's a low line drive taken by the Wolves. Look at this. Another Davis. <laughs> Davis almost broke that one. Matt Davis almost broke it. Well, Feeney with the tackle. That's his second special teams tackle. Matt Davis, look at Springs it. Kickoff team's getting a lot of work at Troy this tonight. So special teams. Here it is. Two plays. 48 yards, only 17 seconds off the clock, and it was a 44-yard run by Conley. Yeah, because the first play was a uh, out of bounds. And uh, he's a little happier there. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Fife on the run, and he'll have to go out of bounds with it. That, well, I don't think the flag that. Let's see. There's a flag. There's back, another flag. Back, back, where back where there'd be illegal use of hands or clipper or hold yeah, or something, but not see. for the late hit. There wasn't wasn't, wasn't the late really a hit, hit. Really, they're just no. hanging on to each other. Let's just, see. Chop block. There it is. Illegal. On Clarkston, and that'll push him back even further. Well, when things go wrong, steam rolls on you. And so instead of a four-yard gain, the Wolves get knocked back, and the cheerleaders have a lot to cheer about tonight. 37 to 8 the score with 9-10 left here in the fourth quarter. And they're all being told don't make plans to go away for Thanksgiving weekend because that's when the state finals are. You might be busy that week. You think they're saying that this early? You yeah, are. You know what? You are. See, I know what you you're know doing. What, though? I know what you're doing. Got they do. The you do do that, and it's bad to do it. On the offense. 15-yard penalty, repeat first down. You know, I can tell you, coaches tell them not to. They think about it. That was uh, blocking below the waist, just in case you heard. uh, Yeah, which is a chop block. That's a chop block. Chop block. First and 34 because of that. Good luck. Clarkston now has a big chunk of yardage to make up. Passing outside to Bemis, and not much there. They do pick up a little bit, though. But, um, Second now and long. But, you know, yeah, when you come off, I remember my junior year in high school, the team won the uh, state title. Next year, they're ranked number one in the state and everything in our cruising. And coach is like, don't think about it, don't think about it. And guys are designing rings and where are we going to have the party and this and that. You can't help but think about it. See, I know why you're saying it. And then you lose. That's I the problem. I know why you're saying this. But we're going to see these guys again in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we might not see them in the playoffs. Five. Back to pass, has time, goes deep. He's got his man, Wasilk, open. He catch that? He's got yeah, it. Yeah, he did. Complete. Good catch. It'll be third and short yardage. We're about to say why we won't see them in the playoffs. At least we won't. Last year they were in the same region, so they played in the regional final. These two teams. Clarkston's not in the same region as Troy. So, Look at Fife. Yep. Unloading downfield. Now the Look at this defender had no idea right. where the ball was. Yeah, that's just... That, 
a good play. You know, and he was actually covered. He can't blame yeah. him for that. Jim Feeney was there, but he didn't get a chance yep. to look back and see where the wall was to make a play. In fact, he was he saw Wasilk come back to it. Here's a nice run for the Wolves, and they pick up the first down. It's little number 32 Phelan, Brad Phelan on the carry. Got a little momentum going right now. I don't know how many of the first team Troy defense defensive players are in there, if any, but those, if they're second stringers, they're fresh. They're not tired, and they're going to want to prove something. So Clark's, you know, it be good for them, though, to try to get some points on the board here. Ball now the drive. At about the 45-yard line of Troy, so the Wolves haven't seen this since the first quarter. Oh, the that's, pass that's a lateral. over that's a the lateral. head of uh, Phelan, and uh, they're going to mark it. Yep, they're going to mark it right there where it went out of bounds as the pass went backwards. That's happened to each team now tonight. Yep. And again, you can't see, uh, or again, you won't see these teams play each other unless it's in the state semis, which is somewhere out state where they usually play them, like up at Eastern Michigan. Hey, there he is, Jim Evans. Hey, that's our buddy, Jim Evans. Want to thank him for the nice article he wrote back in July. Want to thank him for that. And, uh, checks in the mail, Jim. <laughs> he did a real nice article on us uh, for winning the award, the ICE Award for uh, Sports Excellence, local uh, cable award, and uh, we thank Jim for uh, coming out and doing that article on us. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Despite your being there. I know. Well, that's why the check's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Number 32, Brad Phelan. Phelan on the carry, and uh, the Colts again there for another loss, and there he finally gets up at uh, the bottom of the pile. <laughs> Look at this guy, 88, Michael Thompson, second string. He's six foot four, 215 pounds. He's on the second team. I think the second team is ranked, I think, fourth 10. in the state. <laughs> tougher times in practice than they will against certain teams they're going to play this year. Third and 18, five. Downfield's got his man, Wasilk. First down for the Wolves. Now, where was this earlier? Well, I know. Prevent defense. I know. But they need this for next week. Yeah. They need to get something going. Um, big thing I want to figure out. You see, Dane Fife, they're going to avoid that mercy rule thing. That's a nice throw, That's a really. Nice pass right on the money. And Wasilk going up for it. Good catch. Kurt see Richardson. Coach Richardson looking on. He's got to salvage something here, and I think yeah. uh, they're doing a good job of it right now. Eye formation in the backfield. Pro set with the receivers. Five slant and complete to Wasilk again. And he shakes a couple tacklers and dives well, forward close to a first down again. This much. Wasilk's game's picked up ever since he ran the kickoff back. Yeah. I don't, know what, I don't know if it's adrenaline or what, but dang, he's, uh, we got to figure out looking at this Troy schedule, when's the first week that the mercy rule is going to come into effect? As you see, the replay in almost the first Second down. On the Troy team. We have one guy claiming week three. We'll see who they play that week. I think our it's our director. director. Pat Collar, yep. The award so winning week three. Pat Collar. Second down and two. The draw. And Davis runs it forward. Excuse me, Phelan on the carry. Brad Phelan. And tripped up, I believe, by first down. Uh, Mike uh, Kutlich. Week three, uh, that would be uh, Rochester Adams. That could happen. You think so against Adams? That could happen. Now, Adams had a good team last I'm year. I'm going And a very close game that we covered last year. I'm calling. With Adams, and you weren't there for that. One. I was there. I was Were there. you there for Adams? Oh, yeah. Okay. The onside Checking. kick and this and that. Oh, there you yeah. are. There you are. I'm calling two weeks after that against Groves. Okay. Mercy rule will happen that week. I formation. Oh, he's Five got to the pass. He's got him. Did he get his foot in? Yep. Yes. He got pushed Touchdown. out of bounds. Doesn't matter. Touchdown, Jeff Bemis. It, no. Is it? Yep. Is it Bemis? Yep. 15. Nice catch. And that's the same guy, Bemis. I don't remember earlier there was a play where Fife went deep right in front of us. That could have been a touchdown, but he underthrew it. Same guy. This time he throws the fade to the corner. Oh, he even got the foot in, even with the push out. Good coverage, actually, by Dave Price, but Beam is out leaping for the ball. Say, 13 yard pass? 13 yard pass. And the touchdown from five. You think Jeff Bemis has, gets a hard time from classmates? From you, maybe. Oh, I bet you. I bet, I bet he's got a nickname. The extra point is up. 
And good. You see, if, if him and Fife can get this pass and catch thing going, they become the, the big connection in Oakland County, and Fife can get a butthead nickname, and, you know, the, yeah. the obvious. Venus, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm not gonna say, I know extension. what you're saying. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. our directors kind of. I follow you. Yeah, thank you. So, that could uh, be huge, though. So. I think that's uh, a little bit more respectable now for Clarkston getting 15 on the board. And uh, now I would look for another onside kick, maybe. You might as well. <laughs> Next week, don't forget, Lake Orion against Adams as we continue high school football action and Saturday and Monday at 8 p.m. And just remember, all you guys from Adams, it was our director, not us, who think, was thinking about this uh, mercy rule when Troy plays you guys. I'm, I'm saying Groves. And so is, so is Dave Zorn. He is not saying that Troy's going to get the mercy rule on you the week after. Sorry, I stepped away for the Did for you? A moment. Yes. But you're back. I'm back. The Lake Orion, one of the top teams in the second division of the Oakland Activities Association. We're still learning what teams are in what leagues in this thing, this new mega conference. And some great teams. Last year we saw a great rivalry between these two teams meeting twice. The onside kick doesn't go 10 yards. But they touch it. But they touch Troy, it. Troy, Troy guys got it. it. So Troy will take it just shy of the 50-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Oh, they're going to mark it on the 50. So right here, yeah. Recovery. One ref said right on the 50. So Recovery by Benson. So Robbie Benson. You're a big fan of Robbie Benson. <laughs> Pretty good. Um... Yeah, what, what did he do? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I ever saw anything the guy did. Played football for the Troy Colts. Well, I know that. This, yeah, well, the other one. Head coach. He's Gary ecstatic. He, he, he is. You can tell. Look at him. Control yourself, Griff. Remember what he did last year when the he offense was, had the ball? Let's see. Where is he? No, he's, he's actually down on the end over here. involved. No, he's clo too close to the Ten plays, 61 yards for the Clarkston Wolves. Uh, they're really their first scoring drive, really, of the game. Well, that time, uh, Zemke getting his turn to carry the ball at fullback. Dan Griffiths, really, he's actually looks involved a little in the offense. Last year, if you'll remember, he'll, he oh. would... Uh, Stand way 30 yards away, way out of the way of the, of any of the players, you know, I, and just observe the offense. Well, I said it was it, it was like the anti Alfred Casa. Alfred Casa does that when the team's on defense. Uh -huh. he, he doesn't even look at the field. Same thing. Here we go. Second and nine for the Troy Colts. Eye formation for Oset. First man through fake. The pitch from Cousinberry back and gain of maybe a couple yards. Zemke. Gary by Zemke, Matt Zemke, uh, Gary. Yeah. Mike Underwood with the tackle. Tim Whistler with helping out. All right, now you see, here, here's Griff. Here's the team right there. That's not that's not a big deal there. But you're, not, you're not doing good on the I know, here. we're not clearing very well. See, it's right here in the corner. But there we'll show you a little later where he would have been last year. See, just your basic option with the second team offense, and Zemke's getting him, yeah, got him into third down and eight position, third and seven position. There we go. But I think the big thing on that play is that you are not the czar of the telestrator oh, I'm yet. I'm not. You no. still but I don't claim to be either. Oh, there it is. Quick pattern. And they got him. Chris Emery. Chris Emery. Look at that. Quisenberry gets to throw a pass now. I mean, everybody's in on the act. Jim Quisenberry to Chris Emery. Which, if Quisenberry gets a little experience, a little playing time, I don't think he's going to become the starting quarterback. Nice pass. But... Last year, Orchard Lake St. Mary's had Diallo Johnson, All-State quarterback, who every now and then moved out to wide receiver, and they put this guy Marty Malatin or Matalin or something. I don't know how you say his last name, but he's now their starter. But he'd go in and he'd throw to Diallo Johnson because he's such a great athlete. Well, here you might move Kyle Rance to tight end on a series or two if you need it. Yeah. Put this guy in at quarterback. So, you know, utilize all the abilities. Quisenberry pitches out again. And Zemke get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10 coming up. Second and 11 maybe. Let's see. I think he lost a yard. Lost it maybe a yard. Here we go. Second and 11. Uh, uh, for what it's worth, well, we got the chance here. Last year, this would have been Gary Griffith. That, well, sorry. But anyway, there's Griffith now. Where he is now... The first player close to him while they're on offense might have been they're, oh, over here. Oh, it. there he goes. You see? He's getting away. He's going to escape to the goal line. <laughs> Go, Lee, get out of here. 
See, there would never have been anyone within 20 yards of him last year. I think these the people there were setting a block for him. Here we go. Speaking of setting blocks, Zemke again on the carry, and they're working Zemke now. It'll be third. And long coming up now for the Colts. You know what it is. 2.45 and counting down. Your team scores 37 points. You want to be a part of that. You know? So I would I'd do it too. Third and long coming up now for the Colts. Now do you throw? Give them another pass or? Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, get <laughs> yeah. your practice in. There is head coach Richardson. I guess I can see somewhere down the road where they use this. They put this guy in for a series just so they can run Rancid tight end. It's third and eight. Correction on that. Third and eight. And about too much time and too much, and that'll knock him back Delay even more now. So Delay a game. Foul. Delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's why we won an award, because of that thing right there. Yeah. The microphone on the ref. You think so? Who else has one? I mean, high school wise. That's the cult. That's it. Right there. So you're happy with that. People watch for that. Yeah. There we see the sidelines for the Colts. Looking on, uh, cheering on this second team offense that uh, All right, here he's we doing go. a great job. Look at this. Quisenberry to throw. Intercepted. That's score. And, That's a score. Uh, somebody better catch him. And it's Quisenberry who comes back to catch him. And the interception, a big one by number 81, Kaiser, Jason Kaiser. Threw it right to him. Yeah. Uh, 28 yard return by Kaiser. And Quisenberry is going to stay in on defense, so that must be just the deal. If you're going to be quarterback here, you're playing both ways. Learn to live with it. Keeps probably the game. You know, it's probably kind of fun to be on this defense. Let's anyway. take a look real quick, if we can, here at that replay. Right there. He, who did he want to hit here? Oh, right Behind there. Him. No, he wanted right there, yeah. 32, I believe. And I had to pick a name neither one of us could say, Ayad Fakuri. Ooh, back to the action, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Matt Brown, that time. And is Fife still in the quarterback? As far as we can tell, yes, he is. So Fife hit his man, and uh, Brown couldn't handle it as Fife hit him right in the numbers. Second and 10 now. Clock stopped at 1.43 left in the game. High formation, pro set receivers. The pitch goes back to Phelan. Phelan shakes one and brought down, wrestled down quickly by number 23, Dave Price. And kept him in bounds, keeps the clock going. And I don't know if, I'm sure Clarkson's gonna try to throw one here, try to get on the board one more time. Here we go, third and about five coming up, short five. Pro set. And clock winding down, you see it there. Wolves want to get on the board one more time. Fife, pressure, Fife, shakes off another defender. That's Looking down field, make. and he'll eat this one. Yeah. Yeah. He gained maybe a yard, but a very tough yard for Dane Fife. You know, he wanted to turn and throw, and if you don't find the open guy right away, you're gonna get drilled, and he didn't find it. Does a great job here of shaking loose. A lot of quarterbacks would have gone down right There's the short drop back. There's where he scrambles, throws. <laughs> Just throws Brandon Whitbread right off of him. Looks right there to throw, doesn't find anyone. Actually, the open guys are down at the other end of the field, which is, a, uh, I think, a physical impossibility to make that throw. He had to get what he could. Picked up a yard. Fourth down. Ran about 50 and picked up one. Five to throw the other way. He's got his man. No, drop. Incomplete. That was a forward pass. Wouldn't Phelan matter. Couldn't hang it. If it was a fumble, the Troy guy fell on it. But that's fourth down, so that turns it over. 20 seconds left. Well, it matters only in that because it's an incomplete pass, Troy will have to snap the ball once. The uh, clock is stopped at 20 seconds. 20 seconds left in the game, and the Colts will just take the snap and. Uh, That'll do it. Go home. And, and and Griffith start will tell them. on those rings, like you said, right? Well, don't see, well, I'm saying don't do it because I know what happens when you do. Yeah. You lose. Yeah. That's why I say, hey, you know, it's the first but game of the season. Again, you can't help but think about it. Believe <laughs> me, that, it's just a uh, long way to go, though. Coach can tell you all he wants. The kids are still going to read the paper. 
And the Colts do run a play. Look at this. Zemke picks up the first down. And there's still 13 seconds left. Second team offense wants to uh, run some plays here. That stops the clock till the chains move. I don't think they're going to take another snap, though, once they get yeah, the chains set. The they still want to run a play. I bet you they get another one off here. It's going to be hard. There's only five seconds left. Semke in the backfield. You saw him. Nope. And that'll do it. The Troy Colts, state champions last season, and they make their mark this season against the Clarkston Wolves with an impressive victory, 37-15. We'll be back to wrap it up right after these messages. school football is back and channel 63 is the place to see it every week this fall tci sports travels the oakland county area to find the game of the week our next game features two teams on the rise the lake orion dragons taking on the adams highlanders that's the tci sports game of the week next week saturday and monday on channel 63 And the final here at Troy High School, 37 to 15, the Troy Colts over the Clarkston Wolves. And it was all Troy Colts tonight, Joe. Yeah, they showed why they're ranked so high trying to defend their state title. Looks like they might be able to do it. You look at those passing yards. Kyle Rance, 13 for 17 for 163 of them, two touchdowns. Teron Adams led the rushing, 27 carries, 126 yards, three touchdowns. And uh, Drew Patrick, six catches, 73 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> just dominated him completely, even ended up dominating time of possession. Very impressive for the state champion, Troy Colts, coming back this season. Next week, don't forget to tune in. We'll have another contest for you. The Lake Orion Dragons taking on the Adams Highlanders. That's Saturday and Monday at 8 p.m. right here on TCI 63. And the final score here at Troy High School, the Troy Colts 37, the Clarkston Wolves 15. For Joe Abramson and our hardworking TCI staff, I'm Dave Zorin. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week from Troy Athens.